We made it. We are at the trailhead, Upper Co Upper Covington Flat Trailhead. Uh, there's the backcountry registration board here. Just saw my first jackrabbit. Uh huh. And uh, weather is really nice and pleasant. Look at that. Look at that view out there. Beautiful. Beautiful. So we are about to start hiking. Uh, I'll update you guys as we move along the trail. Bye. Okay, we have been walking for about like what 15 minutes now. Um, we're about. I'd say like maybe a little over half a mile in, maybe like three fourths of a mile in. Uh -huh. Got a bunch of Joshua trees here. That's not bad actually at all. Doing pretty good. Chris is doing pretty good. Backpack's all fucked up. It's like all sideways and crooked. <laughs> we will update you once we get a little closer. Bye. We've come to a vantage point about 1.2 miles into the hike. Check out all that. Woo! We will be going up that mountain over there, kind of going around the valley, going up the top of the mountain. So that should be a pretty fun climb. 1,000 feet of elevation gain. Here we go. We are taking our first break eating a cliff bar. We're about, I'd say like 60% of the way there. Um, we just trekked across the flat, um, flat part of the, the hiking trail. And uh, now we're gonna go off the trail into the back country up to the top of the mountain. So this is gonna be the challenging part. According to the GPS, we have about an 800 foot climb, which shouldn't be that bad, I guess, over the course of like maybe an hour or so. Yeah. Um, eating these bomb ass cliff bars. Yes. yes. Chris, your mother will see this. <laughs> <laughs> She's used to it. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Maria. Hi, Maria. <laughs> Sorry, I love you, mom. Oh shit. I mean, this is Pew. <laughs> <laughs> Two hundred feet into the climb, out of the eight hundred. Pretty winded. Look at all that. We came from that riverbed down there. That's where we were uh, taking a break. Way, way down there. We actually didn't come very far, huh? No. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. What's your uh, like 100%, zero to 100%? What are you at right now? Say I'm about 78%. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's perfect. It means we can make it up without dying. Onward, up past that peak and past a couple of other peaks. Right here. 5,240 feet. All right. See you guys in a bit. Finally made it. The next rock outcropping. We are pretty far up. Chris is still coming up. You can make it, Chris. Almost there. What percentage are you now? 68, quick depletion of 10% of energy usage. We are currently at 5,500 feet of elevation, 300 feet left to go, making great progress. And this view is insane, wow. Look at that, we are up really high now. Wow, that's crazy. Super windy up here. Hopefully it won't be this windy at night when we're trying to sleep. Chris made it. We're gonna take a little break here maybe and continue moving all along the ridge line. I think it shouldn't be that bad from here on in because we've kind of passed the hard part. We're just gonna be following the ridge line, so it should be pretty good. See you guys in the next checkpoint. We are almost there. I'd say we're like 90% to our campsite. Just wanted to stop here, admire the view. See all of uh, the Yucca Valley down there, I think that's what it is. Chris, how you doing? Pretty good. 
Yay. We've almost made it to the top. That's the top right there, right over there. Taking our last little break, taking in the views. You can see all of Joshua Tree National Park over there. We came from all the way over there. You can't even see where we came from. Came so far. <sighs> yep, home stretch. Now you can see the destination right there. There's like no one for like miles. Yep, there's literally no, we're the only people here. Like I think in the, in like a, maybe like a solid, like what, like five, six mile radius. There's probably yeah. like not a single person. So hopefully nothing bad happens to us. <laughs> and if something does, well, there's, there's going to be footage at least. So. All right, see so you at the top. We made it. We are at the campsite. We are at the top of Mount Quail. No, Quail Mountain. 55, I mean, no, no, no. 5,800 feet of elevation. Uh, 1,200 of that, which we climbed in the last three hours. We got a view of Joshua Tree over there. We got a view of, I think that's like 29 palms over there. <sighs> yep, set up real nice on this ridge line here. Beautiful. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't get way too windy here because it's kind of like a little bit of a ridge uh -huh. wind tunnel, but hopefully we'll be okay. Time to pitch tent. Welcome to our abode for the evening tent is up um honestly this is not the best place to camp because this is there's so much wind right here but um i don't know you can't really beat this view though check this view out it's crazy hoo, hoo, hoo. Uh, let me show you the inside of the tent so this is my side that's chris's side coming in from my entrance here uh, inside here so we got my sleeping bag here, Chris's sleeping bag over there. Pretty cozy accommodations. Both got uh, inflatable air mattresses here, nice and cozy. It's actually really windy outside, but in here, it's uh, not windy at all. This uh, this tent does a great job of uh, blocking out the wind. So I think we're gonna be pretty cozy for the night. So uh, yeah, I think uh, we're gonna watch the sunset, make some dinner, and uh, get ready for the night. Goat. <laughs> it's not a goat. It was nothing. <laughs> Alright, well anyway. Here we are on our little rock perch overlooking our campsite. I don't know if you can see the campsite down there because of the sun, but it is down there. Right there. Green tent. You got a perfect view of the sunset. That's just gorgeous. Uh, the time is 6 48. Uh, sun's supposed to set in like the next five minutes. It's like touching the crest line right there. Wow. You just don't see that every day, huh? Any, any words to describe your feelings, Chris, for the video? Pure and utter splendor. We can edit that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> we kind of hope the, the sun goes down because it's kind of cold up here and my hands are cold and we're hungry. So we're waiting for the sun to just quickly go down so we can go down and eat. All right. So here we are. We are cooking our little, little freeze dried meals. I have beef stroganoff. Chris has chicken fajita bowl. It's actually kind of getting dark. I'm going to turn my light on. Oh, illumination. Is that too bright? No, no. Let me turn a little lower. That's, cool. oh, that's, that's, yeah. There you go. We got some light now. You see that the sun has pretty much all set. You can just see the little bit of afterglow. It's beautiful. Uh, GoPro probably really can't pick this up that well. But if you look all the way over there, you can see the shimmering jewel of the desert. Palm Springs. It's not that great. Have you been there? No, I heard it's kind of trashy. See, our water is boiling. Oh, almost boiling, coming to nearly a boil. So a couple more minutes, I'd say. Then we're gonna smash. I'm so hungry. 
Okay, pouring out the water. A little more. I don't want to get your fingers. There we go. Perfect. Yeah, stir, stir it all up. Get my beef strong. Make sure the water gets to like the bottom and all the powder gets wet because there's like a lot of powder at the bottom. Yeah, it smells good. It smells really good actually. Like it smells way better than I thought it would. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had like freeze dries free freeze dries freeze dried beef strog before. I'm call it up. Just let it sit for however long it tells you to. And then we enjoy in a little bit. The time to eat has come. Let's open open these babies up. What does yours look like? Woo! Chicken fajita and rice. I got See, beef stroganoff. stroganoff. Why does mine look like gruel? <laughs> this is like what, like, like fucking, um, like Charlie's pe like grandparents ate, like when like Charlie's dad worked at the toothpaste yeah. factory, screwing lids on the toothpaste tubes. <laughs> it's a horrible job. Actually, now that I'm mixing it up, it actually looks pretty good. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Actually, oh yeah, turned out. All right. That's kind of that's bomb. Let's try. Mmm, yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Like, low-key bomb. Well, it's not like, is it the best food in the world? No, but it's pretty good. Here, try to taste my best of yours. No, yours is good. I like it. I don't know too. Hmm. Hmm. It tastes so much better, I don't know, because like we've exerted ourselves so much there, but it's good. Welcome to Inside the Tent. Um, we ate, Chris is reading his book, and um, just decided to, to get in here because it's kind of cold out there, really windy. At least in here, there's almost no wind. It's really cozy, pretty warm. Uh, okay. Yeah, tucked into our little sleeping bags. Um, plan is just rest for a couple hours and um, go back out maybe around 11 o'clock so we can see the uh, the stars out there, do some stargazing. Uh, it's a beautiful it's a beautiful night out. There's no cloud, so it should be pretty good. See you guys in a couple hours. <laughs> we just woke up. The time is 11:21 to look at the stars. It's actually really warm and cozy. It's having a nice little sleep in there. But I don't want to miss uh, miss the view out here. So, oh wow, I wish the GoPro can see this. There's so many stars out. See the moon probably. It's super bright. It's beautiful out here. Whew. Throw up some pictures that I took. So you guys can kind of see what it looks like. Wow, beautiful, beautiful. Of course, there can't be a camping trip without having some ramen. 
So we are cooking up little bags of ramen. Ganjang pong. That was pretty good. Ganjang <laughs> pong. That was terrible. This is like a, <laughs> a ramen technique that you use when you don't have like a, a pan to boil the ramen in or a pot to boil the ramen in. You just boil the boiling water into the bag itself and just let it cook and then eat straight out of the bag. And this is a staying warming technique where you just walk outside with your sleeping bag still on. <laughs> still cozy. Midnight snack is served. Spicy seafood ramen. Oh, yeah. It's beauty. Beauteous. We're just sitting out here on a little ridge. Uh, you can probably, I don't, I don't think you can see the tent, but our tent is right there. It's really dark. Uh, those lights over there, Palm Springs, shimmering lights, moon. Just sitting here, eating some ramen in the moonlight. Probably gonna take some more pictures and uh, go back to sleep. The time is now 1.25 a.m. Done our ASO photography. Got some really cool pictures of the stars. But I think it is now time to go to sleep for me. Chris is still reading his book. He just popped his sleeping mat <laughs> with his book, with the corner of his book. So now it is deflated. We put a patch kit on there. We'll, we'll try to inflate it a little in a little bit, but... I don't know. Hopefully it hopefully it stays, hopefully it works. Well, that is it for tonight. I will see you guys in the morning. Night. Good morning. It is 8:30. We woke up super late because we went to sleep pretty late last night and <laughs> totally missed the sunrise. But look at that out there. Uh, so we're gonna get up, get ready, eat some breakfast, and uh, start packing. Kind of bummed we didn't see the sunrise, but I didn't even wake up. I think I woke up right when like the heat started, uh -huh. like intensifying. Oh yeah, it's actually pretty hot now. Oof. It is breakfast time. Got myself some breakfast skillet. Dude. Actually looks like actual breakfast skillet. I mean, I mean, yeah, it does. You can't really like mess up scrambled eggs. Chris has got breakfast, breakfast hash. hash. Is it like pretty spicy? Mm hmm That looks pretty good. Breakfast hash for St. Patty's Day morning. Yeah, today is St. Patty's Day. Oh, that's why our tent is green. <laughs> you probably specifically think mm -hmm. It's a great view. Great view for breakfast. Dang. Up on this side too. Wow. Alright. Time to eat. Have some coffee now. We had our breakfast coffee, nothing like some coffee out of a uh, Nalgene. <laughs> Chris has a luxurious coffee. Yes. Yeah. I'm drinking out of Nalgene. It tastes the same, I guess. Oh man, I'm not looking forward to packing up. That's gonna be a lot of work and walking back down. But it must be done. I think packing up will go pretty fast. Yeah. Maybe. Next time we uh, film, we will be all ready, all packed up, and about to hit the trail. Boop, boop. We are all packed up, ready to leave, saying goodbye to our campsite. You have served, served us well. And I like those two rocks that we used as a defense mechanism <laughs> slash hammers to get our stakes into the ground. Well, this is a great view. I will miss it. Goodbye, great view. Goodbye, campsite.
time to head on down. Not looking forward to that part. <laughs> Hopefully we don't slip and fall. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Making our way down the hill. We actually haven't really come that far. Our campsite's right there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the view is great from this ridge line too. Yeah, this ridge line wouldn't have been a bad place to camp too. Yeah. A nice little view. Some some rocks you can sit on. Oh, yeah, pretty sick. Yeah. See Mount Jacinto all the way out there. Yeah, that's a. I think that's Southern California's highest peak, maybe. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Maybe. All right, keep you guys updated. This is pretty non-challenging so far. We're cruising. There was a gecko, but it went over. There, there it goes. I don't know if I caught that. It's a little cute little gecko. He's trying to make me change insurance. Actually, I am already on Geico, so. Barking up the, the wrong tree, man. Decent update. We are trekking through the back country. No trails here, just relying on our GPS. Um, we're supposed to go all the way back up to that peak right there, and then all the way back down to the ravine. Um, you can still kind of see where we started from, but it's kind of uh, fading out of uh, the line of sight, which is good because we don't want to see that anymore. It means we made good progress. So yeah, I think uh, next update will be on top of that peak. Here we go. We made the climb all the way to the scraggly rock peak. You can see where we came from. That peak way over there with a little jutting rock. We call that pride rock but we traversed our way all the way around up to here. We made it. Whew, that was pretty tough. Yeah, that was. Now we gotta take a little break and all we gotta do now is go down this super treacherous looking hill towards the dried up creek bed down there. And from there you can actually see the trail where the dried up creek bed turns into the trail down there. We'll just get on the trail and uh, walk back to the car. And that'll be it. <sighs> Man, we are climbing down this super steep hill here. Um, hopefully we don't slip because if you slip and fall down this thing, you're gonna go all the way down to the bottom. Um, we came from up there. So yesterday when we were going up, we like climbed up this sheer rock face right there. I don't know how we did it, but uh, we managed to do it with uh, huge backpacks on. Going down is actually a lot easier on our bodies, but it's very stressful because, you know, we, we, we definitely have to be careful that we don't slip and fall. So, taking that time a little bit. Oh, there we go. Taking it slow, taking it nice and easy. Ooh. Doing okay, Chris? Yeah. Wow, I, I like the GoPro. I, I want it's not gonna show the steepness of this. I know. But if you like literally look to the side, it's like a 45 degree incline almost. Uh -huh. It's super steep. That's like crazy. Oh man. Okay. Hopefully we we make it to the to the riverbed without falling. And uh, if we don't, I mean if we do, I mean if we fall, this will be our last recording. We have made it back to the trail. As you can see, super easy terrain now. This is Chris. We came down from all the way up there. Yeah, there, I think. All the way up there, that peak. Came all the way down that mountain. That's the Russian gnome. And then right up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now it should be easy hiking all the way back to the car. Actually, there's a slight uphill segment over there. But after that, it should be easy hiking back to the car. Smooth sailing from here on in. Whew. Oh, I can't wait to get back and put on some air conditioning. So we came all the way across the flat trails. And then there's this uh, slight uphill section right here. And uh, after we crest it right there, should be uh, pretty much all the way flat back to the parking lot. Or almost there i'd say like 90 percent there yeah. in terms of like effort 
required. Wow, I can't even see the mountain that we came from. We've walked so far. We're like way over there somewhere. I can't, yeah, past these flats. We've actually walked a decent distance like here in this flat area, yeah. wow. I was just thinking that too. That's a, that's a long ways we came. Cause I remember when we first came out of the ravine, like these like uh, pebbly hills were like really far away to our left, but now we've like passed them and like passed them by a lot too. All right, onward we go. Up this last hill, almost there. Woo. It's a home stretch, home stretch. Can do it. We made it back to the car. High five. Phew. Oh my God. That was, all right, let's see if we can see where we went on the, the thingy majiggy. Yeah, so we came, we started here, went all the way down here, did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, came here, split off, went off, went off the road, climbed this mountain, Quail Mountain, 5,800 feet, that's where we camped. Came back down, super treacherous right here. Walked back on, all the way back on the trail. Back to the car, Damn. in and out. Feels good. <sighs> back to the car. Oh man, now all we have to do is go home. Thanks for tuning in. That was a fun trip.